the most perfect design game ever, right? Like, if you don't feel like you can raise that point, then the moment he's proven to be a shitbag, you can go, finally, I can talk about how much I hate this shit. Yeah, so when Samus turns out to be a shitbag, <laughs> Joe can be like, fucking knew it. Fucking knew it, Tony. <laughs> Don't tell him she's actually a woman. Oh, Ooh, spoiler. What? Spoiler. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, how big a deal that would have been back in the NES days? Mm. It was It was a cool thing for me to be able to tell Jess. Like, she was like, what game are you playing? And I was like, oh, I'm playing, playing Metroid. This is Samus. And uh, she's a lady. And she's like, oh, that's cool. I was just like, aww. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, it's almost like representation matters. Yeah. Um, one of the cool things about Samus uh, in the game, mostly as well, is she's, she's. I mean, partly because it's twists. Uh, she's a woman, but part, like, there's nothing like uh, video games love to put, you know, a bow in your hair and eyelashes, but there's no like. She's not like super sexy or anything like that on top of games. Um but you know what I mean, they 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 don't go heavy in with the this is a woman signifiers that a lot of games did around the yeah. era. Yeah. I mean they kinda of ruined that layer, but you know what I mean. You're a gamer. Yeah, the stuff they do in fusion is fucking brazen. Mm. Um Which is it's a real shame. And like especially the stuff they then carry on with in Other M is Oh yeah, Other M's terrible. <laughs> Awful game. A game where Samus has to ask permission from men to use her weapons. Yeah. Not great. But I think like you, you, it's pretty rare that you get it in games now, where like this character is just a woman and isn't like heavily signified as a stereotypical yeah. woman. And you know when they do, when they do it differently, uh, it becomes fucking massive controversy. I mean, the stuff around Last of Us Two is uh, yeah. incredible, and that controversy measurably changed how I played that game. And I don't want to talk about it too much because you need to play it. Um, but you just playing systems the... themselves on like a nearby stereo. <laughs> it's <sighs> okay. You can't. Yeah. If this is a spoiler, that's fine. That's fine. I, I, that's I, fine. I just, I just can't talk about it. Like, yeah. you guys need to play this game. Um. Like, it's a game about women. You know. Okay, maybe that's why nerds get so angry about them. Because yeah. I, I, I watch a lot of, lot of YouTube mulch. It's what I'd call it. Just trash. Um. Oh man, I've got a story to tell you in a minute. But carry on. Um, <laughs> you reminded me of something. You know, a lot of that is like fucking game stuff of like, oh, top ten, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Like, just absolutely crap. Um, but it stops the inner thoughts from destroying me completely. Um, so, yeah, so like any time the last was brought up in literally any context, there will be some shitbag in the comments being like, oh, that's the worst you the do. Clock, it's like, I, I don't know why these people are so terrified of, of women uh, existing in any way and doing anything in their games it's really weird and it is played over to movies i'd say as well Ten seconds. I'm close to the well time. well Sorry. it's men do you remember where in this level the uh, security room is <laughs> uh if you go through the wine vats and go through the secret door Love a wine uh, you can go up the stairs oh no wait no that's wrong Go, so there's the wine vat room, and then off to the side there's a room that controls it. If you go through the back door there and then up the stairs, you can get to the security room. You can also get to it from the floor with the dance floor on it. If you go into the reception desk and go left, you can get to it through the toilets. Man, you're really good at remembering the geography of those games. I have played a shit ton of Hitman 3. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I like, and especially that level. I think I've done almost every kill in that particular level. Wow. Um, so yeah, you just get to know it. Yeah. Yeah, I just realised I just did it. What would have been Silent Assassin, but realised I was caught on the camera and I didn't notice at some point. And 
realized my thing had gone yeah. yellow. If you're traveling with a small child, it was so, literally just before as well. I think there oh, might be a security camera thing at the you know the very entrance where you meet Diana. There's a security room there. I think there might be a camera thing in. There's also one by the fountain, not the fountain, but you know the central car park area. I'm pretty sure um, behind the security fence there, there's a security room there. Is the, the the one I'm talking about is like the massive security room that like lets you turn off the you know right. the gas oh, and right, stuff. Yeah. And there's definitely a camera thing in there, but I'm pretty sure that there's one in one of those other places. Anyway, patriarchy. <laughs> I, I think I was done um, soapboxing. Um, <laughs> well, on that particular topic, anyway. I mean, I'm never far from soapbox. Oh, by the way, I think you might, I think you might enjoy that Castlevania show as well. We're watching some no good. They, they they made it. Also, the first season is four episodes long. So, it's very easy to try. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. It was basically them going like... Because it's quite high budget animation. It, it, fucking really nice looking show. Um, so they just made four. And were like, if this catches on, we can make more. And those four episodes are real fucking good. They do not in any way equivocate to like... You know you used to get um, like a Robocop animation. Uh, but it'd be for kids and stuff. Like, this is a Castlevania animated TV show that is exactly as gory and as, as goth as you would hope. And, uh, um, it's, ah, it's so good. I think it's, I think it's the best video game adaptation. Uh, that's the end of the sense. Okay. I mean, you're clearly forgetting about Sonic Underground. <laughs> when I said that to my, uh, other friend, he said, uh, you clearly forget about Super Mario Bros. <laughs> now that is a film I still have not seen. I have, there's a special version of it out, which is like a, a not a director's cut, but kind of a, a sort of restored cut. It's not a good film, but I think it's a very interesting watch. I didn't know they released it on a watch. Get a watch. There's a... Uh, a moment in Suicide Squad that you, yeah, remember when you watched Suicide Squad? Remember that you said that? Because I just had a very weird kind of like I just watched things about her. And that's not a spoiler; it's just an offhand. <laughs> it's just a joke. Yeah, an offhand. Watch it. Uh, off. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, but uh, cast genuinely Castlevania show. They're like twenty minutes, twenty three minutes long each. The animation is gorgeous. Uh, they do not fuck around. And yeah, you can watch this season of four episodes and decide if you like it from there. <laughs> Uh, and I fucking love it. You know what you've reminded me of as well, is mm. I've not watched all of Love and Robots, and that's supposed to be really good too. I hated it. Um, and I, sh it, like, I feel like... Again, like, Suicide Squad, like, like you sh this should have been for yeah, me. Yeah, that is the... That... Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's deeply, like, to a weird degree, misogynistic. Oh, really? Because um, I yeah. watched, I think, the first episode. I kind of half watched the first episode and thought, this is an okay concept. Hmm. But. I mean, there's really wow, nice okay. animation in there. Um, like, genuinely, they, they do collect some of the world's best animators, which is cool. Um, but it's so incredibly misogynistic. Uh, almost every episode, because it's an anthology, almost every episode. It's just incredibly Wow. Tough. And I was really disappointed. <laughs> like, the first few, I, I was like, it. oh, that's not great. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, for the first few, I was like, oh, uh, okay. And then uh, it was every single one of them. There's the occasional good episode in there that you can watch, you know, and not go, for fuck's sake. But, yeah, most of them is pretty grim. It's almost worth watching for the animation, but it, it, yeah, you know, you can't really rip it from what is being animated. Fair enough. But I'm not in the second season, so maybe maybe they address that. Do 
Joe, did you have a um, so long. Hitman question, or have I missed? No, I understood? succeeded. I succeeded. Hey, hey, Hitman! Well done. Well done. I pushed a man. That's what I did. Oh. I had a short time, man, before pushing you on my blind. Because I should. The best thing about doing a oh, bait question is you don't have to remember the dialogue. I can't. Oh, I have oh, the game, so, so I don't. Uh, <laughs> His impression is I can't actually record it. Oh, oh well, so I'm not going to have that one. Oh. No, I didn't bother doing it on mine. But I, you know, reset my whole PlayStation and haven't checked if my streaming picks up my voice anymore. Well, the. um... you reset PlayStation? <laughs> I think the reason I didn't do it was because uh, we were talking all the way through the mission opening. And I normally have right. like that in my in my video is like have that and then go to my successful attempt. Um, Can't do a cheeky double push I... now? No, because you've quit out to menu, haven't you? Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. No if, you sw if you go to the XMB, it stops the recording. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So how did, you, how did you do it? Uh, I, I waited until he was outside the cinema and then I uh, Planted a remote bomb in the bin next to him where he sits. Oh, I didn't let his loot get that far to, to, to find that out. <laughs> I shot him with a um. So I, I don't know if you have it. Oh get, no, no, you are not going up there, anymore. It was about to jump up onto one of my sides that has <laughs> lots of things on it that would go everywhere. Um. I don't know, yeah, I don't know if you have it. It's the tranquilizer gun that has the emetic poison in it. Do you have that? Uh, uh, I... Yes, I think I do. You get it from one of the... Um... Oh, I don't know where I got it from. No way. Right, okay. I, I, have, I have something like that, anyway. Yeah. So I, so I have my... a remote, remote emetic poison gun and... Uh, what, you shoot and... people with poison? That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you shoot them with the poison so, that makes them so go dark throw up gun, somewhere. Yeah, don't do that. Oh, that's awesome! I didn't realize that existed. It's awesome. yeah, it's it's really really powerful for like, especially for these elusive targets because it takes them completely out of their loop. Because like, if you time it right and you can get away with shooting them with it, like but you can like force them to yeah. they take a beeline to to like a toilet or something, which is almost certainly I mean you can just assassinate them there. I have um, definitely learned that toilets are the most dangerous place in the world from the Hitman games. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately he, he took the route of going to throw up over a ledge instead. Um, ah, dangerous. Um, but the thing is, he's, he's got that couple that are with, with him. And yeah. so I had to distract them. So it's literally like they were following him. He starts throwing up. I threw a coin behind them. They turned around and I pushed him. Oh, and you just pushed him. Like, oh, <laughs> <a> terrible accident. <laughs> I love it. That's so hit, man. And, it, and then it was at that point where I went. I suddenly noticed. I was like, "Did I get away with that? Did I oh, get away with that?" Oh, there's a camera. And then I, there, I, there was a camera at the bottom of those stairs I hadn't seen when I we walked out of the cinema, and I'd been clocked on that. And so I was like, "Ah, oh, shit." So yeah, I know. But yeah, the route through the toilets was it was was absolutely fun to get to the that that big main control center that you were talking about. Yeah. I was really pleasantly surprised that it was uh, a gay couple planning their wedding and that it was just no big deal. Yeah. Like, no. I'm just not used to seeing that in games. And it's yeah, just really it just, nice. Yeah, it not being a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're kind of there in TV now. But... Uh... That was via a lot of shitty storylines, right? But yeah, games have mm. a long way to go. So I'm on top of this rocky outcrop with a crave. I don't know if this guy's seen me or not. Oh shit, it's a bloodhound. Oh fuck. <laughs> don't see you yet. Oh what? This whole time there's a rampart there. Okay, rampart's good. <laughs> I had a really good game earlier that I forgot to clip that ended in absolute stupid disaster. Um, 
I think I, I was something like six kills in and like. Ah, oh, uh, just killed the whole team. Four team, <laughs> nice. The ones there were like four teams left and we got caught by the ring and the whole team just died to the ring. <laughs> like it was just, it was so dumb. Like we'd done so well, we'd like rescued each other and all sorts. Uh, and then, yeah, the fucking just the ring came in. I think like um, these kind of massive levels with like an encroaching thing, they did lend themselves quite well to a slapstick nonsense, right? There's something mm. inherent in, in this drama of multiplayer game. There's, um, it kind of, I don't, have you played the Back for Blood verses at all yet? No, is, oh, it, no. is it like the Left 4 Dead one? It's, I mean, I guess the answer is always not. yes. It is. Oh, okay. It, it, so it's a turn-based um, RPG horde mode. Oh. Um, That'd be crazy. <laughs> Just full-on GRPG, <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a mode like this in Left 4 Dead 2. I can't remember what they called it. Um, oh no, I fired my but, gun by itching my face. Sorry about um, <laughs> um, But yeah, basically, there's a round where you are the survivors, you get a short setup round, and then the enemies can be the special infected, and they can upgrade their powers over time to be stronger or to upgrade the powers of the horde. Um, it's more like the Gears of War um, beast mode than the Left 4 Dead. Um, right. But it goes round on round on round, and each round has a ring that closes in on them. And the oh. final round is literally like the final round of Apex, where the ring closes so small that you can't help but damage yourself. That's the very whole point interesting is... thing to do with it. Yeah, so the, the specials have to, you know, kill the uh, survivors before that happens. The survivors just have to survive as long as they can, but their time limit is based on that ring closing in. Uh, over a really tiny little map, like a, you know... A place the size of refinery. Not even that, the, like the main, the, the main building of refinery. What's the survivor's like, win condition? Or is it just survive? Just the... survive. Well, so you do that, and then you do another round where you switch teams. And then you, you do best oh, of last longer. three or four rounds. Yeah. Wings out. Mm. Yeah, it's not... But not fucking hell, I won yeah. that game. Holy shit. Amazing. Um, on your, are you on your own? Are you a solo? Yeah. Solo drop. Nice. nice. And in the end, I defeated whole, two whole squads. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's also a fly on my screen, which drove me absolutely mental. <laughs> oh, man. God. Man. Don't talk flies to have flies. Been so, flies uh, have been so uh, bad this summer. And, and I guess. 